Um, why don't we go ahead and get started? So welcome everyone to the uh, UNM Health and Health Sciences Office for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. My name is Dr. J.P. Sanchez. I serve as the Executive Associate Vice President in the office. On behalf of all of us in the office, as well as our partners across the campus and Vice President Dr. Romero Leggett, who will be joining us during the program, we would like to thank you for making time to be a part of today's celebration. For those who could not be here today, this presentation will be recorded and posted on our Heritage Month Celebrations website. Before we begin, I would like to just go over a few housekeeping items. We will be using um, Zoom technology, as you know. Um, it will allow participants to unmute themselves and also share their thoughts and comments, as well as feel free to use the chat box to um, provide uh, our uh, recipients today with felicidades and congratulations and any questions. In addition, you should see a um, in the chat box an item to complete our pre-assessment. For every session, we do a pre-assessment as well as a post-assessment. And that helps us understand your interests and reflections during this month and all of the Heritage Months. And thank you again, Dr. Swan, uh, for helping to ensure that this is a successful event and activity today and, and providing information in the chat box. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you again for participating in today's particular session titled Office for DEI Excellence Award for Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm really excited uh, that we have a number of distinguished recipients, as well as individuals who work with them and have helped um, nominate our recipients today. With that, um, our first recipient that I would like to highlight um, is Roy Sanchez. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to uh, Christina Duchette, and I hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, uh, to please um, say a little bit about Roy and a little bit of his background and what made him worthy of being nominated. Christina? Thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity. Um, I'm Christina Duchette, and I am the Executive Director for Providers at UNM Hospital. And I've had the, the opportunity to work with Roy for 19 years. We both started at the same time. And anyone that knows Dr. Sanchez, he is absolutely amazing. Um, I wrote down just a few comments to share. Um, so Dr. Sanchez is always professional and kind. Um, he treats every patient, colleague, and leader with utmost respect. He creates positive environments, whether it's in an exam room with the patient or whether it's in a meeting. Um, I've never had an interaction with Dr. Sanchez where I did leave a feeling better than where I came in at. And I think anyone can speak to that. Um, his interactions make everyone feel heard, cared about, and safe. He has worked tirelessly through service and dedication to serve patients and to create a better environment. Um, his commitment is just of the utmost, uh, deserving of the utmost respect, and he is very deserving of this award. And I'm so excited that he's getting recognized today. Um, thank you, Dr. Sanchez, for all that you do. You are inspirational. Um, and you take care of all of the eye patients and all of their all of their needs, which we all appreciate that. So thank you for everything that you do. And thank you to this group for letting me come and just say a few words about Dr. Sanchez. Thank you again, Christina. Uh, as many of you may have already noticed on the website, there's also a little bit of a bio of um, Dr. Sanchez, Roy Sanchez, not to be confused with me, who's the other Sanchez, there's many Sanchez's, but um, we're acknowledging Dr. Roy Sanchez and his bio is also on the website. So um, thank you, Christina and Dr. Roy Sanchez. Um, thank you, Christina, for those really kind words. Um, I I didn't know if I was gonna be able to, to make this meeting. Um, it's uh, my my parents have had some medical issues uh, as of late, uh, and I'm actually on my way down uh, to to see them. 
Um, I, I, I'm very honored by uh, this award. I'm, I'm really kind of surprised and, and honored by the award. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to, to thank everybody and, uh, and say that, uh, you know, this, this 19 years I've spent at UNM has been uh, really a great time. I couldn't ask for a better place to be. I really love my patients. I love the community that, uh, that they come from. Uh, and so, uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, right now, again, uh, my my parents are having some medical issues uh, that they they require help. Uh, my sister uh, is an amazing person. She she lives in Tempe, but she's in trying to help with those medical issues and get to my my mom to all the doctor visits that she needs. Uh, my father is is currently in a care facility that that needs um, some attention. Um, so um, we're I, I want to dedicate this award to them. I, I think my parents have really. Uh, they're they're uh, you know amazing people uh, and they've really been uh, one of my inspirations. Uh, they they've always uh, really uh, uh, dealt with community um, and they've been uh, you know they they have tons of friends. They really touch the community. Um, uh, they 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 volunteer uh, and, and do anything they can for the community. And um, again, anything that. Uh, I've become is really because of their inspiration. They've really been uh, excellent people, and I hope um, you know we can uh, help them through these uh, these kind of crazy times. That we, but anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody uh, for this award, and uh, again, just surprising us by this nomination. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Thank you so much for stepping away and joining us. Um, Dr. Roy Sanchez, it's truly an honor and privilege to be able to acknowledge um, all of your contributions. Um, so thank you again. Next up, our next honoree is Dr. Alfonso Belmonte. I'm just gonna take a, a moment and share a little bit about Alfonso. Uh, Dr. Belmonte is the son of Mexican immigrants. His parents instilled in him the values of community, work ethic, and service. He is a proud product of pipeline programs offered through the HSC Office of Diversity. These programs have helped him strengthen his desire to serve his community, specifically as a medical provider. He completed his undergraduate degree and medical degree at the University of New Mexico and his pediatrics residency and served as chief resident year at Phoenix Children's Hospital. He has been on faculty with the Department of Pediatrics in the Division of Pediatric Hospital Medicine since 2015. He has focused his career at the intersection of education and equity. He has sought out professional development in education through programs like the American Academy of Pediatrics Advancing Pediatric Educator Excellence Program, the UNM HSC Medical Education Scholars Program, an excellence in clinical teaching program in order to apply best practices in his evaluation of learners, a step crucial in bringing equity to our medical education system. He has completed the ACGME Equity Matters Program to strengthen his skills in building inclusive spaces. He currently runs a longitudinal curriculum within the pediatric residency known as Evidence-Based Medicine for Equity and he currently serves um, as the Director of Career Advisement for the UNM School of Medicine Office of Medical Student Affairs. In his role, he strives to make all students, regardless of their background, feel welcome within the School of Medicine. And if you didn't hear him um, during orientation for medical school, he wrote this beautiful poem on what it means to come and be a part of um, a home setting here at the School of Medicine. So please help me in um, congratulating Dr. Alfonso Belmonte for this award. Thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> um, I'm very honored to be here and receive this award. Uh, uh, I do better when I write things out. So I'm gonna read a little something that I wrote this weekend. Um, I think it's a theme, I, I write stuff out, but um, won't take too long, I promise. Um, here we go. Nepantla y Puentes. As I reflect on my life journey and career, there are two words that come to mind. Nepantla y Puentes. Nepantla, a Nahuatl word, an Aztec word for in between. Puentes, the Spanish word for bridges. Nepantla y Puentes, in between and bridges. I was born in the United States to Mexican immigrants. The feeling of Nepantla 
the in-betweenness has been with me since the beginning. Chilaquiles or hot dogs? Boys to men or maná? Spanish or English? This feeling of nepantla comes with pain. Rather than feeling like in-between, it can feel like a tearing, a ripping, a dichotomy. The, silu the solution has, to that pain has been to become a bridge builder. It is no longer this or that, but rather and. Chilaquiles and hot dogs, boys to men and mana, Spanish and English. When reflecting on my career, I needed significant help in building those bridges. One variation of my nepantla was being a nerd in the barrio. Growing up in a systematically underserved area of Albuquerque surrounded me with violence, but my loving family gave me the foundation of service to others. I was in the nepantla. I loved talking about the 1964 Chevy Impalas with white walls and hydraulics, but I also loved talking about how the mitochondria were the powerhouse of the cell. My family was a driving force for my bridge building. They encouraged me to love both. The UNM HSC Office of Diversity Pipelines, currently known as Communities to Careers, was another vital player in helping me build bridges. Through those programs, my interest in medicine was fostered and fueled. I could love both science and serve my barrio. Throughout my time in medical school and residency, key faculty helped me build bridges between my community and academia. People like Dr. Romero Leggett, Dr. Anna Duran, Dr. Janelle Aragon, Dr. Edith Allen Prieto, Dr. Santiago Macias, and many, many more. As a faculty member, I continue to build bridges for myself and help others build their bridges. I was turn, torn between my nerdy love of evidence-based medicine and my desire to tangibly serve my community. The, build I bri the bridge I built to do both took form in the curriculum I developed for the pediatric residency, Evidence-Based Medicine for Equity, a curriculum where pur I, we purposefully engage in literature that highlights medical disparities and inequities, then dive into evidence-based articles on how to manage those very same disease processes where the inequities exist. We see both a problem and a solution, a puente. It is my desire that this curriculum prepares a generation of pediatricians to address the medical inequities that plague my community. Another iteration of my Nepantla is my love for teaching and um, directly providing great care to patients. The bridge for those two is perfectly summarized in a quote by Dr. Norcini. Quote, medical educators touch the lives of the patients through the excellence of their students, end quote. My community could get better care if I taught my trainees to be excellent, so I saw opportunities to hone my educational skills. This award fuels my desire to build bridges and help others build their own. This award is a puente, a bridge in and of itself, as I often feel many of the intangible things I do for my community are not seen won't help for this academic path because it doesn't come in the typical currency of academia publication. But this word helps all that world work feel seen and appreciated as its own form of currency. I will dedicate myself to continue to build puentes in my current role as pediatric hospitalist, making some of the sickest families of New Mexico feel seen and heard in my role as clinician educator, helping medical trainees address inequities in medical care and in my role uh, as Director of Career Advisement for the School of Medicine by striving to make all students feel welcome in this space. Thank you. It is an honor to receive this award. Congratulations again, Dr. Belmonte. Um, and as you can see uh, in the chat box, many others are also uh, extending felicidades, congratulations, and thank you for all of your contributions. Next up, um, I would like to invite up Dina Duran Quintana to present our next recipient. Good afternoon. Congratulations to everyone um, that received a, an award for this. Very excited to be here to um, talk about Loretta Sanchez, another Sanchez on here. <laughs> um, she is our community support worker here at the Southwest Mesa Clinic. We um, we take pride in our clinic for serving our community here. We're a big force here and in hiring Loretta, uh, we knew that she would really um, 
benefit this community with a lot of her ideas and things that she had to offer. Um, as our community support worker, she organizes many community events for us and provides a lot of um, courses for our, our patients and, and our community, uh, such as like uh, cooking classes, chronic pain classes, diabetes classes. Um, when we have our free shot clinic every year, she helps to get donations of backpacks, toys, school supplies that we give out for free. Um, she's a big part of our shared governance um, group, and they raise, she helps to raise a lot of money to help with um, providing a lot of uh, resources to our patients, such as um, we help patients with their medications if they can't afford it, um, blood pressure cuffs, um, just like multiple things like people that come to our clinic come for many, have many, many needs here and she's always willing to help. I've learned a lot from her. Um, she has taught me um, from, well, just from example of what a giving person she is. Um, I really enjoy working with her and I'm glad that she's here at our clinic. Um, she helps people with emergency food boxes, dignity bags, uh, with personal essentials if they don't have uh, a home. Um, she finds, uh, you helps people find resources to pay their utility bills, housing, transportation, um, many other things. Uh, she also helps our patients and families in our community um, for multiple things. Like she was concerned about somebody who didn't have heat in their home, didn't wasn't able to afford the wood, and we were able to come together and figure out a way to to provide um, wood for that person to live through the cold winter last uh, winter. Um, our staff go to her who um, are also struggling with um, resources and she helps them with no question. And um, she deserves uh, this recognition and I'm very proud of her and I'm glad that she's here with us. So um, thank you, Dina, for all of that. Um, can you all hear me? Sometimes my computer goes out, so I just wanted to make sure you all can hear me just fine. Okay. So um, I've been pondering this. Um, I was really surprised uh, when Dina spoke to me about this award, um, and I didn't know what to say. I still don't know what to say. Um, I was pondering the questions, you know, the, the, the journey that you had while getting here, the first thing that you said, the journey. My journey has been long and weird. Uh, it's not the usual medical field journey that we had. I mean, I I could say that I started this journey back from when I was a child with my grandparents, who I will dedicate this to, but I've never not helped anybody. I've never not been shown that. My family has always been, if you had something, you shared it. If someone didn't have anything, you shared, you helped. And from helping this community from standing with my parents in the 1960s and 70s, you know, fighting for equal rights and, and, and moving on from that to my grandparents showing me that you always gave a helping hand. My journey has been very long to get into healthcare. It's a very long and winding road as well. This is my actual, my second career. I was a probation officer in the community for 22 years, approximately. And, um, I did basically care management for my population. I didn't want to ever see my clients again. So the only way to not see them was to help them, like to get education, get out of poverty, get benefits. This way they would not be in front of me ever again. And, and um, how I got introduced to this job in healthcare was my old partner at juvenile probation. She decided to become a nurse. This is one thing that she wanted for her whole life. And um, she said, there's this position open at UNM and I applied for it. And I questioned it. I questioned why somebody would want to hire an old probation officer that wasn't in the healthcare business. And um, lo and behold, it was actually one of the most perfect things I could ever do. Um, luckily, Dina and the team at Southwest Mesa brought me in and it's been it's been just a great journey um, helping out this community. And I don't, like I said, I don't think there's ever a time that I haven't helped anybody. 
and being able to serve this population and just being able to go out there and find the things that they need. And, and sometimes it's a struggle to get what we need, but I will, I will find a way. And, and I usually do, and it usually works out. And the team here really helps with that as well. So that's been really great. Um, just being able to work with this whole population. It's been amazing here at UNM, uh, Southwest Mesa, um, given the freedom to do what you've always wanted to do and that's help people. And um, so thank you, Dina and Alex for, for all that. Um, I hope to always continue doing this. I hope I never not help somebody. I hope I never don't have enough time or energy to do this. I hope I'm always in the community fighting for, for everybody to be included and to be equal and to be given the opportunity to you just just being given opportunities. Um, my grandparents, they were so great. They, they didn't have anything when we were growing up, nothing, but whatever they did have, they shared. And we made it work as a family and in the community. And my grandmother was the most loving, caring person that you ever saw. I, I truly believe she was an angel on earth. And she taught me that from an early age that you just went out and you shared and you helped. And I'll never forget that. And and talking to Dina about what to say today, that came up. It was it, it was just great roots with with my grandparents, just great roots and being able to to know that just being kind is such it's it's such a pleasure to be kind. It, it shouldn't hurt anybody. It just it doesn't take a second. It doesn't you know random acts of kindness just take a second. And um, when I teach, because I also teach, I tell my students it takes nothing to be kind, and um, it takes nothing away from you. And I hope that I always have that. And I hope that I pass that down to my children and to my coworkers and my friends, that it doesn't take anything to just go out and help. Excellent, thank you so much. And congratulations again, um, Loretta, on, on this award and achievement and um, the beautiful words by Dina just shows how much you mean to all of them. So thank you again, both Dina and Loretta. Um, so with that, we just want to, before I hand it over to our Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, for closing remarks, and I'm grateful that Dr. Romero Leggett is here as a longtime champion and leader for our office and, and for UNM Health and Health Sciences. Anyone else, because I know we have a lot of community members who may just want to create a space if anyone else wants to share a personal thought or comment on any of our recipients. Um, Roy or Alfonso or Loretta. Well, I'll give my remarks in a little bit, so I'm <laughs> holding off. Well, maybe we should turn it to you, Dr. Romero Leggett, and, and then we could circle back. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Sanchez. And just again, bienvenidos to everyone. And uh, thank you, everybody, for being part of what's just, I mean, very inspirational and touching, right? I mean, this goes to our heart. My gosh, I was over here tearing up and just remembering so many things. And it just gives us that opportunity to stop a minute and just reflect on all of this goodness and what these, you know, the wonderful people that we have here that uh, make up this community and the communities that we serve. So I thank you for that very much to all of you and our, especially to our honorees today. Um, and, you know, just also uh, just a thanks as well for joining um, all of us in this, in celebrating this amazing month as we came together to celebrate the rich, you know, diverse cultures and traditions and languages and the contributions of our Hispano, Latino, Mexicano, Chicana, in um in this state with the highest percentage of Hispanic in the nation. So uh want to acknowledge, you know, Dr. Sanchez, uh JP Sanchez, because we had a bunch of Sanchez's here today, and uh Amaris and the amazing Heritage, Hispanic Heritage Month committee members, because it's really like your passion and your leadership um and you know plan and design and produce these amazing sessions. And um again just so happy that we could all come together and honor these exceptional individuals from across our entire um, health science, health and health sciences um, for this Inclusive Excellence Award. And, you know, today, I just, as I was listening, my gosh, it was just, I just, these words, you know, we need to do a word cloud next time of all the things that come out of this, because, like, I heard, like, 
family so often and here in equity and opportunities and building bridges and giving back and community, right? And, and kindness and uh, probably so many others, but those things I think just touch all of us. It reminds us of um, how we come together as you know, human beings and, uh, and doing the work that we do. But again, congratulations and felicidades to our uh, just amazing, exceptional honorees. And I appreciate your sharing your stories with us as well. I'm happy we're going to have these, um, you know, always on the website and uh, people can, uh, who may have missed today can come and, and see this. But um, thank you to everyone who joined. And again, our honorees, you all are amazing. Um, and I'm going to open it up because I'm sure a couple other people might want to say some things. Uh, I was touched. And again, congratulations. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, Valerie Romero-Leggett and Dr. Uh, Sanchez. I just want to say this is such an honor to hear about the incredible stories for each of the honorees and each of your commitment to um, our the well-being of our patients and our communities. Uh, my name is Shanoa Ba, and I'm affiliate faculty with a Pre-Health Scholar Certificate Program, and I'm also working as um, Senior Project Manager with um, HSC. And I just wanted to say, I would love for my students to hear of each of you and what you shared, especially your poetry, your stories and um, your journey. I think that's what our students would benefit so much from and they're going into medicine and nursing and other health programs. And it just, this is just, it's true. It's very emotional to hear and also how it connects to each of us and why we do what we do. and. Um, it just, it brings hope and empowerment, but also our students can aspire to what each of you are doing in every way. And I just want to say thank you and congratulations. That was beautiful, Shinova. Thank you for sharing that. Well, be, before we close, I, I want to thank everyone again for being a part of today's celebration um, for these distinguished Latina, Latino, Latinx, Latine, Hispanic, or Spanish origin staff, faculty um, within our UNM Health and Health Sciences. I just want to take a moment and also share that we, as we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month that goes up until October 15th, Disability Awareness Month goes from um, October 1st through the end of October, the 31st. And on the uh, our website, you'll already see the events for the upcoming Disability Awareness Month, including um, on Wednesday, October 11th, Disability Services through the UNM Accessibility Resources Center, as well as Unlocking Inclusivity, Transforming Perspectives Using Lessons from the PO Model and Occupational Therapy, Tuesday, October 17th, and then accessing the Center for Development and Disability Information Network Library, a guide to New Mexico's free library on disability, October 19th. In addition, I want to highlight Native American Heritage Month, which is November 1st um, till uh, 30th. We will be um, featuring Dr. Owen speaking about I Heal, the Indigenous Health Educators Alliance as well as on November 27th, an introduction to traditional healing in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. Both of these um, months will continue to expand. So be on the lookout and check out the HSC Celebrations website as it serves as a forum for everyone to share their events and ensure that um, we bring greater visibility to everything that everyone is engaged in. So with that, I wanna thank um, and congratulate our honorees once again um, and have a wonderful day. Take care.